Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the DreamHack Open Valencia, powered by Face It. Uh, I'm Richard Lewis, your host for this event, and uh, we've switched things up a little bit. Henry G is still with me. Of course, I'm here he, to the bitter end. Yeah, he's, he's here at the bitter end, making friends and influencing people, and all it took was a fake beard. Uh, <laughs> you know, Beautiful. If you'd known that earlier, you could, you could have been, maybe you could have still been playing, mate. Who knows? Uh, anyway, next in, we have got the faces of Face It. It is, of course, uh, James Bardolf and DDK. Uh, James, you're joining us for the first time today. How have you been? Not bad. I've been uh, sitting around watching Counter Strike, eating food in the Razer <laughs> VIP lounge, of course. Uh, ch checking out the new mouse as well. But you know, just been watching the games. Still trying to uh, recover from that 16-0, which was Crazy. quite. I think we're all in a state of shock. I mean, uh, you know, we've all had time to react to it on stream. But just to get your thoughts, have you ever seen anything like that? I was I was watching it with Threat, and he said that it was possibly the most bizarre thing he's ever seen in in, in Counter Strike. Counter-Strike full stop, not even Counter-Strike go. Exactly, okay. yeah. Wow. wow, incredible. So, there you go. Um, so, look, we, we've, we're only halfway through and we've seen, we've seen some things. <laughs> we've seen some things. Uh, but uh, we're going to get into it now. One of the surprise packages today, the people at action, that 16-0 on Virtus Pro, uh, it's going to be Kingwin going up against Na'Vi, who actually lost to Cloud9 to be in this position where they got to uh, take Kingwin on. And uh, that was a shock in itself as well, it's got to be said. I mean, Cloud9 have been on a great run of form lately, but that should have gone to overtime, and then they lost an eco. Strange, strange times ahead. But uh, just to talk about these uh, two, two teams, this matchup, I'll bring you in at this point, Dan. Uh, what do you think? I mean, is uh, a Kingwin going to do it again? Have they got upset potential? Um, I don't think they can against Na'Vi. Na'Vi have been climbing the ranks through sheer consistency, hard work. And everyone in Navi right now is playing really well. And they've been hitting grand finals back to back. They have really well at Star Series. They've been doing generally incredibly well. And they're a team that might, might just be strategically and potentially tactically maybe the top team at yep. the moment. Mm. Because individually, you can't compare them to Fnatic. But they're still of that level. So this is a team whereby they should be able to easily defeat the strengths of Kingwin, which is the individual game. I think yeah. Virtus Pro, at, lately they've been very inconsistent, especially on land. There's some issues clearly going on in the team at the moment, whether it's motivation, whether it's communication. There's something happening there because they're not playing good fundamental counter-strike. Na'Vi will, and that, that's without a doubt. So I see this being quick, like double 16-10, mm. 16-12. Uh, I see Kingwin getting rounds, but I don't see it ever being something out of the grasp of Na'Vi. Well, we'll take a look at that Na'Vi team, and you're absolutely right. They're in a great run of form right now. Obviously, current ESWC champions. That was the last tournament they were at. And uh, you can see there, we've obviously got Flamey, who's really come out guns blazing lately, coming into his own, really stepping up his play. We've got uh, the legendary Edward, uh, the man with the beard. Uh, Mr. Solid, Mr. Reliable. Zeus, of course, the in-game leader, one of the great in-game leaders, and has a very unique in-game leader style. Very Flamey looks like aggressive. he's taking hostages. <laughs> and I will not release. <laughs> Guardian at the front, who uh, he's trying his best to look as tall as everyone else in the team. It's not quite working for him. The Pocket Rocket, the best opera in the world right now for yep. my money, uh, hands down. And next to him, the, the man with the most beautiful skin uh, in CS. It is, of course, Seize, too. He's had some hit and miss performances, but I still think he can be the guy that can be a difference maker for Na'Vi. So uh, best map up there, Mirage. Definitely uh, want to watch if they get that map in this upcoming veto. So, just a few thoughts about Na'Vi, James. Well, um, you know, they are looking like one of the top teams in the world at the moment. I mean, that much is clear. They're, they're coming on as coming out as multiple champions. Yep. And, uh, you know, what, what can you say? Like, they're, they're one of the teams who, when Envy were, were, were at their most dangerous in their kind of Bedlam anarchy style, they were one of the teams who could hold them off the best on maps like Inferno and so on. Um, so they're going to be uh, probably one of the favourites to take the tournament overall, I'd say. And uh, just a few thoughts from you as well, because, I mean, we've been parts of teams that have had to play against Guardian in the past. Mate, I've, I've lost so many finals to Guardian, I've lost count. How many times I've felt that AWP uh, shoved down my throat. Um, one thing to know on this game, we've seen Interesting Kingwin... Interesting choice of words. We've seen, <laughs> we've seen uh, Kingwin perform a couple of times here. It's quite clear their cash is strong and their dust too. If we, if we see those maps come into play here, I, I think I'll walk out. Like, it seems like people aren't vetoing Dust 2, a map which is a, a mixed playground. People can actually Gotta just use their individual skill. Get rid of Dust, get rid of Cash. Uh, like Dan said, uh, I think Navi are one of the most tactically advanced teams in the entire scene. Yeah. They've got so much to fall back on. And with that kicker of Guardian being the best Orper in the world, 
they just play their game and don't overthink things and just do what they normally do. We saw VP being a bit apprehensive to go into bomb sites. They thought they could uh, cause too many fakes, and it was kind of difficult to watch at times. So yeah. as long as cash and dust to a remove, I don't see this going any other way apart from 2-0. OK, well, we'll uh, take a look at that King win side, and I'll let you uh, talk us through this, Dan. I know you like to do the player introductions. Dan. Big well, man. of course, uh, Michael Ely, everyone first got to know him. I mean, he used to be called XM way back when. He's part of that core LGB lineup that shocked and awed everyone, as well as Dennis. So, kind of quite interesting to see Dennis come in. He's replacing Quitten, and I probably completely butchered that. Quitten was calling before. Just say Sky Kitten. Sky Kitten. <laughs> and now, of course, actually, uh, you won't see it here because the caller is actually not on the list. Apparently, the caller is Delito, who's actually uh, coaching them. So, this is something that's completely bizarre. We have to look at Scream as well. I'm doing this out of order, but Scream is a huge standout player for them because he really um, embodies what makes Kingwin so dangerous. Is incredibly strong individual play. He can just play perfectly. You have to you have to use strong tactics to defeat Scream. It's that's how it goes. Put them in horrible spots in that way. Uh, otherwise, Scream is is hands down going to give. Highlight after highlight. Rain, we saw him earlier with an incredible one versus four uh, clutch against Virtus Pro on train. Okay, Virtus Pro messed up, but Rain showing that. This guy is can deliver in clutch yeah. moments. There's a lot of clutch potential in this team. Fox has been a great opera for a very long time as well, and he adds a lot of uh, a lot of good openings potentially for well, the team. That's the thing. This event, Michael Early actually announced yesterday he's taking over the orb role. Yeah. We've seen Fox step back into like, the support role, and I, I, I never really rated his rifle before, but after seeing him at this event, yeah. he's put really in putting in some great rounds like two or one or two frags yeah, almost yep, every single yep. time big defensive frags as well like ones that really matter so it's quite interesting though like day one Fox is orping. Day two, completely change things around. Mm. Coach is calling, and uh, Michael Ellie's orping, which seems to be obviously it's working for them. Like they've turned their results and, around. And uh, I, I got to say as well, like just in terms of confidence, I was over with uh, those guys just now. That's why I was running a little bit late to get to the desk, uh, talking to them. They're in fine fettle, and no doubt about it. Makalela was saying that they just think that we you know after what we did to Virtus Pro, we can beat anybody now. Like the sky's the limit for us. And one of the things that was I always felt was holding them back was could the team gel? Could they bond? Well, anyone that follows their Twitter feed lately, you know, they're all having photos with each other, you know, holding hands, sunny walks, romantic evenings. They're really starting to come together, and that could be frightening because if this using the coach as the in-game leader, or rather the out-of-game leader, yeah. if that comes off and works for them, they could be uh, a, a terrifying prospect for anything. Well, I touched on it before. I said that I really didn't rate the, the value of having a, the, the, a person coaching doing all the calling. I really believe that you need that that vibe, you need the connection with the game, you need to have that instinct. Uh, there's so many things you don't, so much information you don't get by playing on the game. So yeah. they've obviously proven me wrong so far since they've done that 16 0 one versus the, one of the best teams in the world. Yep. Obviously, something's working for them, but that, to be fair, that was a CT side. It, it, and it seems of, like an anomaly as well. It was a CT side of cash. You don't really need to be doing many mid round calls, you just need to be choosing your setups aggressive pushing from individual players, and there was a lot of clutches there. We mentioned the bomb went down 10 times yeah. uh, for VP, and like, they didn't convert a single round there. So fundamentally, that was just them not clutching out. Yeah. So uh, what we can do now is we can take a look at the map, Vito, uh, bring it up for you and see how it went down. I'll bring in the uh, silky smooth tones of James to talk us through this just when it comes up. It is coming. It's coming. It yeah, is coming. It is coming. It's we definitely coming. Right. There okay. we go. So, All right, so I'm assuming. Wow. All right, so Navi vetoed cash, of course, as we expected. Yep. Kinguin saying no to Cobblestone. Yep. Kinguin removing Mirage as well, and uh, Navi removing Train. So dust mm. to Inferno with Train, sorry, Overpass as the decider. Now, this is really interesting, James, because I've ta I talked a lot with Guardian about this, and they were having Navi, it always used to be one of their best maps, dust two. But they're having a crisis of confidence on it. Guardian was saying to me, I think I've been found out. I think people know how to neutralize me. And it was based on they got uh, beat by Fnatic at a, at a frag bite. So since then, they've avoided playing it. Now, here, they haven't taken it away from Kingwin. And of course, that's the map Kingwin want to play. But there are no slouches on it, Na'Vi. I, I thought that their decision to not play this too was just a little bit of like, you know, they, they mind messed up themselves. Very nice. <laughs> PG-13, mate. Yeah, I, I think it, it's going to be situational depending on who they're playing, for example. And Kinguin are a team, again, they're a new team. We have to bear that in mind. That works in their favor in the sense that they will be somewhat unpredictable. Yeah. But it works against them in the sense that they're not going to have drills against specific teams, as, as many as they'd like, you know. Yeah. And they've just changed uh, their in-game leader and had a roster change as well. So, I mean, how much they're going to be raw in so many different areas that maybe uh, it's not so much as a concern for Na'Vi versus Kinguin as it might be versus Fnatic, for example. Yeah. 
yeah. And I, I think this veto really strongly favours uh, Na'Vi. You know, they're no slouches on Dust2. They've been great on Inferno lately. Really good results at the post in there. And as we said right at the top of the broadcast when we were doing the re recap for yesterday, Overpass, probably the best team in the world on Overpass Absolutely. right now. So I think King, King, this could be a bridge too far for Kingwin. What do you think? Dust2 is the, 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 the one chance I have, I think, to get the momentum and uh, get the ball in their court. Inferno, I really don't see a way they can get into it. We haven't seen them play yet. It's very difficult to work out how the... That's when you're calling is really important. If they start T-side in Inferno, like getting the, the plays and getting the map control and feeling out the map, that's when they, that, this in-game leader is really going to be tested. Dust2, we know they can rely on the individual play and the, the, they do, I assume they're just going to do more of the same, working together, getting picks. Inferno, you can't really do that. You can do so much in terms of map control. You can walk up, look for frags, but you need to execute properly. You need to get the correct calls, bait out grenades, and then choose the correct place to execute. Okay, so the teams are getting ready. I'm going to start with you, Dan, and work our way in. Let's get some predictions. Put your money where yeah. your mouth is, son. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think this is going to be something like 16, 16, 8 on Dust2. It, of course, depends on who starts on which side. Yeah. It's around the 16, 8 region. I don't really see Kingwin getting more than 8 to 10 rounds. And on the, on the next map on Inferno, again, it depends who gets CT. But again, I'm going to say something around 16, 8, 16, 10, yeah. actually, in favor of Na'Vi. So quick 2-0, that's convincing. I would agree with Dan, actually. I think the only person who, like in, in terms of the, the different AWPers on, um, on Kingwin, you say that Makaleli is a primary AWPer, yeah. I feel like the only <clears throat> person on a map like Dust2 who could stand um, a chance to beat Guardian is actually Dennis because he is a complete savage with the AWP. Oh, yeah. In the old LGB lineup where you saw him doing just crazy things, like he's just like a, a hungry animal with rabies or something with that gun. So, But the problem is, it's probably going to be Makaleli AWPing and I don't, I don't think he will uh, surpass Guardian, so I would, I would say similar score to Dan as well. Yeah. Henry? Um, judging by the pistol play we've seen from Kingwood, they've, I think they've won almost every single pistol round they've come mm. up against. It. That's, yes. been, that's been really beneficial to them. It's got them a great start to each game and got mm. them a good like, starting pace. If they can get that, I see it being a close map, um, maybe 16, a similar score to Dan, 16-10 maybe. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I see this going 2-0, but I said that last game and we saw some crazy stuff going down. So very difficult team to predict if they're, if they're hitting their shots and Scream was playing at the sort of level he was before. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, it's got to be worth mentioning as well. Navi, one of the best pistol teams out there. Like yep. Guardian, crazy with that uh, silenced USP as well. So, you know, Kingwin have got it all to do, in my opinion. I'm going to go 2-0 as well. But without any further ado, we're going to be ready to get into the game. This is Navi versus Kingwin. And what we're going to do is we are going to have DDK and James do the cast, but we're going to bring Threat in as well. He's going to sneak in. Me and Henry are going to go and watch it in a luxurious yeah, in a luxurious <laughs> VIP lounge, being fed grapes. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but for you guys, it's going to be even more awesome because you're going to get to see some amazing Counter-Strike. Take it away, boys. All right, thanks very much. So. The interesting thing is going to, going to be, for me, if Navi... Because Navi wouldn't have expected to be facing Kingwin right now. They're probably preparing for Virtus Pro. So they'd be like, uh, we're up against Kingwin now. I guess we should just play a standard game. If they had any time to check Kingwin's game against Cloud9, obviously Cloud9 beat them on Dust2, and this is, of course, a choice of Kingwin, then all they need to do is do what Cloud9 did, which was play basic fundamentals and not just play good basic CS. They should be able to take the match just with that, as Cloud9 did. Welcome, Fred, by the way. Hello. Hello. Yeah, well, I completely agree <laughs> with you. The key to winning Dust 2 versus Kingwin is just don't go for the low buys as CT. Eco enough so you can buy that op, so you can buy all the nades you need, and then just play the basics. Because then you're forcing Kingwin to make set executes, you're forcing them to play more of a team style game, and you can't really, you can't really play into the style of Kingwin. You can't let them be able to just go for the aim duel, which you will give them if you go for the low buys, which basically forces you to play aggressive short, play aggressive mid. So I really hope Navi will play a defense, defensive CD setup here, and I think they will. I mean, they have Guardian. He can play that core position. Right? Yeah, I mean, James, do you think that they're just going to get locked down if they try to go aggressive against a defensive Navi? Kingwin, um, I, you know what? It's, it's hard to know what to expect because I feel like Unpredictability is, is one of their advantages here, but Navi, you know, if you look at if you look at the way Envy would play, they, they, they just they just try and, and cause anarchy. But the thing is, Navi were one of the best teams at, at controlling that. On they their had so many side. fire extinguishers, James. Exactly, they had all the fire extinguishers. They were extinguishing everything, and so I feel like against other teams, maybe the, that unpredictable factor would be more relevant. But here. Maybe not so much. And I think it's going to be really important that they're uh, 
in-game leader outside the game and tries to read their setups of Na'Vi and tries to play against them. So obviously it will be important for Na'Vi on their CT side to change things up. So we will see who will come out on top. You can see as uses shorts there. All kinds of colours. Must have come straight from the beach. We saw Edward in the hotel earlier, actually, <laughs> yeah, as yeah. we as we because we just flew in this morning, and he was just walking around with a towel around his neck. You know, he's like Valencia. Yeah, he, so, like, he like stopped, paused, stared at us for a second, like, and then just arms up. Valencia. Valencia. <laughs> so you know, these guys they're pretty relaxed, but it's game time now. They're going to be focused. So, and one thing I have to I have to say is that with Kingwin, I feel like they have to start CT. I feel like if they want to win this match, they have to start CT. I do not think Kingwin will get many rounds on T side if, if of course, Na'Vi win the pistol and get some good economy early. Yeah, I completely agree, especially since I don't think Kingwin have many A executes. And we're gonna go live into the pistol round here. We only we see two kits on Kingwin. Indeed, so two kits it's becoming a common occurrence, it seems. Um, Although sometimes it can even be three. So Rain pushing up mid. He's going to find the first frag there. Edward going down. Won't spot any more players. And he's going to back up before the trades can come in. C's getting there just a little bit too late. And from this range, even if uh, the T's get a headshot, it doesn't necessarily mean a kill. The Kingwin side will have the advantage with those USPs. Yeah, and uh, it's actually quite interesting because that, that push for the CTs on short, that is solidly in the meta game. It has been for a while. But it looked like Na'Vi got caught off guard by it. So a nice opening for... Penguin, but Na'Vi starting to respond. Sees as they make their way down middle, Na'Vi are getting a quick little kill. It will even things up, and they have done a lot of damage. Three players tagged down to 50 health for Kingwin, and in comes the play into the A bomb site, and there's a nice opening from Guardian there. Can Dennis do some damage back? He's on only eight measly points of health, and he is repositioning, but he's going to get finished off. Four versus two. You don't like Kingwin's odds in this one. They've still got one kit that is on screen, and uh, we all know what his aim is like. You can see Fox a bit paranoid about um, people maybe being behind him, also avoiding the flashbang. He's going to go down screen, finding one. He's got three more to find. Eight bullets in the uh, chamber, but Guardian has other ideas. We did mention they're strong on the pistol as well. Now will be a good start for the uh, favorites in this match. I really like the detail there from Navi. Instead of buying an HE, they drop a P250 to Guardian. He actually got two kills due to having a P250 there, so I really like that detail. And one thing actually about the double diffuse kit is Kingman played the opening, the aggressive, which is the meta. But the reason to do that is for fast rotations because you find out what's going on or fast kills. So you don't want the bomb to go down. So it's kind of maybe a wasted investment from them as well. But Navi going with a classic anti-eco just up long. This looks pretty smooth from them so far. Kingman should know what's happening though. Yeah, you can see Scream has purchased a scout. No armor. Navi will of course get the first frag. Scream almost making a connection, but uh, no damage done to any of the players just yet. You can see they've gone straight for the AKs, in fact. Only an MP7 onto Zeus, so they're not messing around, maybe respecting the aim of these players. They want to get the, the full force in. Scream going to be scoped. If he wasn't scoped, he might have seen the player jumping up there, but unfortunately, he's going to go down as well, leaving only Fox, who is uh, not long for this world. A clean round by Na'Vi. Yeah, a clean round, even though King Yun went for the force by with three Cavaliers and one Scout. And we talked about this a lot this past few weeks. Don't go for the force spam the second round as C2 on us too. It's so hard to win. You should go for the approach with Cloud9 and TSM uses where you just buy a few P250s, go for the stack. If they don't push your side, you just go for the exit kills because it's almost impossible to win that round. Yeah, now it's going to be Na'Vi just again, another standard anti-eco variation. They don't they don't want to do the same one twice, but this is just as strong. They've left the player towards the stairs and upper dark, which is, is easy. He could be in a bit of trouble. He will toss in the nade and fall back, just smoking himself off. I like that a lot from C. He's playing it safe, and we will see uh, a frag going towards Kingwin, but how much more damage can it get done here? We have that push through the smoke. Edward will happily receive it with the Galil. And it's a double. And now it's just Michael Ayla left. And he won't get the frag, unfortunate for him. Oh. So only one frag. So he's only had 8 HP there, but he couldn't get the shot off before the, uh, the aim punch kicked in. Double orb Ooh. setup. So the two of the players didn't go for Kevlar then on the second round. I must have been mistaken. But still very risky play to go for this on the first weapon round. Are they going to both peek mid at the same time? I wonder. Well, wow. Guardian will find the shot onto Fox. You see how... Fast, he reacted that was like, amazing. I see where you are. All I heard was doof, 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 doof. Now Fox has got 20 HP, and they're going to lose a player in long as well. McAnally coming in to hold things down, get first shot, and the second one. Two more players to find, however. The bomb's gone down, and he's going to reposition. No scope, won't be fast enough. Dennis will find the frag. So 
the hold on long turns out to be good for Kingwin, but a shot through the smoke there, and uh, all the plays are suddenly going to be lost for Kingwin, and they're going to lose oh the round. All the plays God. disappeared in, the, in what five seconds? That was absolute chaos there. I mean, firstly, Mike Lele going in close range with the orb gets the double. I mean, that's what Mike Lele does. So fair enough. But what in earth is going on? The kill for the smoke, that push through mid, very crazy save. Yeah, Edward getting a double there with the Galil is very lucky, to be honest. He got the first kill, I think he just got the second one through the smoke. So a bit of a lucky play there from Navi, and they're going to be up 4-0. That is a disaster for the uh, European side. Very unlucky indeed. So that, that grenade, by the way, is super smart. He even waited for the timing of a cat boost because he knows they're on eco. That's something that they can do. In goes the nade. Almost two players dead. That, that, that's just, I just like that. Edward with uh, shooting gallery. And he's going to find himself one, although he's going to be dinked. <laughs> and he's decided he's done with all the weapons. Maybe he'll make him run faster, but he will manage to escape. Sees 5 HP and Edward down to 12. So there is a chance for Kingman to do some damage here, but insta trade coming in and Zeus will pick up the AK afterwards. And you made a really good point there, Dan, with that HE. And that's the way you should, should approach a team like King when you should just slow push them with Nate, especially when you know they're on an eco. We see the double up here. Yet again, we see four helmets, even for Kingwin, even though they know they're only up against AKs. Yes, a bit of an oversight there. Never mind, it could have been saved. Again. Fox <laughs> is just going to be that guy. He is the pinata. Yeah. The guardian. Everyone's been that guy, I think, right? You're playing a game, you always get tagged through the doors. Today it's Fox. That really sucks for them, but at least he's alive. At least Guardian chose to let him live this time around. And actually, Zeus goes for the fast play up short. Navi are going in with pace towards the save bomb site, but. The open Michael Ellie has provided quite some level of resistance. And he's going to get caught in the side there, having to pick where his attention goes. Both players for Kingwin looking towards short, and that will be what shifts things back into Na'Vi's favor. As they go for this play, they will get the bomb planted. And Kingwin, this is, a, this is quite an awkward spot for them because Na'Vi should have a good positioning for this one. Na'Vi in control of long with two players on site, making it one now. So uh, Kingwin have control of short. And they have one player in CT spawn who might choose to go up the slope, but this is not going to be easy. There are no nades in the bank here, and that shot's not going to be hit by Fox. Time running down. They've got two kits, but they're going to have to find two people in the long area, and this may not be doable. Still not pushing the site here. Time is running down even more. Fox getting the first frag, but it's more or less too late for them to win the round, and I think we're all going to buy on the site, unless the smoke defuse comes in. Nope, C's going to come in with the AWP, and that is going to be that. And it almost looks like Navi is not respecting King at this point, because usually we see Navi play an extremely slow style. They usually make the push at 30, 20 seconds left of the round. But now they're just rushing short straight away into Michael Illis up, but they still manage, manage just to win the trades. That's pretty, that's a, actually a very good sign. I mean, Scream is very dangerous on B, so maybe they're like, well, we can guarantee better trades towards A. Maybe that's something there. But the fact that they can run into Michael Illis up and still lose two players and still get rounds is incredibly intimidating for Kingwin. And now they're on eco again. You're just going to see a few pistols from them at the moment. But Navi, once again, they're so cognizant of the money situation. They know the kinds of buys that are coming out from Kingwin at this point, and they are responding. And the fun thing about this is that, okay, we've got Dennis on the one deep, but that's limited damage. But the cool thing is that Cloud9 actually beat Kingwin on this map with much cleaner T play. It looked a lot better. But not, as you said, Na'Vi just don't give a damn, it would appear. Double yeah. orbs continue here. Yeah, I completely agree. Because rushing into that orb on short when Michael Ellis playing the car, it's sub-optimal, mm. obviously. You want to go for the Wall of Smokes or you just want to make the long push first. Sea so. Guardian just disposing of his HE there to pick up a uh, incendiary, or a Molotov, excuse me. Double orbs again for uh, King Gwyn here. 7-0 deficit. Na'Vi charging up the ranks here. And Kingdom will know that this is not going to be like the previous game. Yeah, this is very rough as far as starts go, but once and, and also to be honest, I think you know Navi's CT side will be just as strong. So Kingwin need to start making some frags, pick up some rounds. We'll get an opening there from Michael Elliott. Defensive shot will connect onto Zeus. The in-game leader is down for Navi, but they still have players to work with. And we can see them working into middle now as well. Something that we wanted to see more of from Liquid earlier. We'll see if Navi can pick up any info, any potential entries from it to work from. They could really use something, some option at the moment. 
Scream right. is there. Nice position. It's a curious smoke from Edward. A bit of a variation on the standard uh, mid to B smoke there, leaving a gap into CT, in fact. And they're going to trade Scream, who was on the boxes, chose to jump down, took down Edward, but that's going to be that. So, four versus three now. Flaming, we've only uh, nine HP, and Seas will take that match to even things up here. Bomb still, top mid, and uh, Na'Vi have their options. They could send two towards long here, as they've got control of short. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. We have uh, the defense coming in from Rain. He's going to be locking down the long doors. He was very, very good at doing that in the previous matches we saw just yesterday. And here it is. Seized with a nice opening there onto Rain. We'll drop him straight away. But he doesn't know where the next player is. Dennis is holding down slope. He has to look in two places at once, but he will find the frag and the round. King would pick one up, but they lost the three players there. That was a really cool run from Kingwin, though. They boosted Scream and Cedar Spawn and had three guys on A because they know it's very unlikely that a B push is actually going to come from the B tunnels. It's usually coming from, from that B split, so leaving Scream at that position in CD spawn makes it very safe for a B split as well. And they're going to do it again. Indeed, so the AWP continues on to uh, Guardian or Guardian since we are in Spain. And of course, Fox has been tagged through the doors down to take 20 HP once again. Might as well just start the round of 20 HP. So, we'll see if these uh, two orbs can survive. Kinguin, they've got one round on the board here. If they lose this round, then uh, their economy is going to be decimated and Na'Vi could get a monster T half in. The problem for Kinguin, or sorry, Na'Vi here though, is if they go to, for a B split or for an A split, they're actually walking into a trap. And a standard mid to B smoke has come out this time. However, Na'Vi are not committing to anything, still keeping their cards close to their chest, backs to the wall. Edward uh, preparing the smoke to go onto the corner. We'll see if they go for a wall off to um, isolate the player in the pit. Indeed, that's exactly what they're going to do. But Rain is very good in this spot and a great, great flash coming in to help him out. He gets a free frag because of that. Might just get more, more flashes will arrive, but he doesn't get the second kill. However, he is delaying them. Rotation is, in fact, not even needed because indeed, King would have four players on this site. Seized with a drop headshot there onto Scream, that's going to make life difficult now for Kingwin. They still have Michael in a good position. He whiffs the shot. He cannot afford to do that. And now here it is. Dennis has to defeat the world, it would seem, as two more players will be left on the long push from Na'Vi as they have staggering numbers against a crippled Fox. Got crippled straight at the start of the round. And he can't really do anything from this, anything from this position. So a uh, nice uh, round there from Na'Vi. And they've walked into the four stack and they still win the round. Yeah, the key was the jumping headshot from Seas mm. to, towards Scream and Seer spawn because then they just denied the, that extra player on A. So, a bit un unlucky there for King Win. However, it's still a very strong execute there from Navi. They had perfect timing from both long there and short. I think you made a really good point earlier about the B stuff. And it's quite smart of King Win to actually pick up on it as well because not only you need to be using Scream, and of course, with all the A plays, Scream's not getting used. That always not even factoring in. It's basically Rain and Michael Elliott trying to factor in, and Dennis trying to save things when the, 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 his teammates basically die and the bomb's about to arrive onto the site. So I like that they're trying to use Scream more, bring him into mid, and uh, well, eight to one. Let's see if Kingwin can get something done. It's not looking uh, good so far. He jumped. Well, as you can see, the money from Kingwin, they've got about $1,500 to $2,000 in the bank here. So uh, this is Na'Vi's chance to really extend their lead. They could even go like 11-1 here if they can continue their consistency. Speaking of consistency, it's going to be Rain's turn to uh, hold the L for Fox as he will go elsewhere with the AWP. This really is a rough situation. Not much to really hope for apart from some damage in this round. And this is the spot where we finally see Na Na'Vi on an anti-eco, knowing that there's an AWP in play going B, and that is so smart, as they should be guaranteed trades, easy frags. It's exactly what they're going to get, and the AWP cannot come into play. In fact, the AWP will be lost. It is down by CT, and Dennis will pick it up and try to save it, hopefully. We'll maybe get some frags. Nice Boom. shot there from Dennis, and this is the savagery we were talking about previously, but he can't get more done than that. Just a simple two kills for Kingwin, and Na'Vi's just continue the steamroll. And I think Kingwin needs to eco again. They're actually going to go for the buy three Thalmasas, four Thalmasas. They have some nades to work with, not a single kit. This is not going to be an easy round for King Kingwin. And the problem is, if they lose this round, they're going to have to eco again. And it, it feels like they can't even try to play Na'Vi at that game where like, we saw Cloud9 do it, TSM and Fnatic do it, bait, bait them into a B split by hiding players on B and making A look weak because Na'Vi don't care right now. They're just going in. They're not really playing the standard game where they you know, respect your opponent, you take information. Na'Vi are just going for it. So 
it's so hard to play with. It almost looks like the NIP Liquid kind of matchup, but almost even worse at the moment for Kingwin. So it's hard to see how they're going to find an advantage here. But here we go, Navi with short control again. Well, they've got one person playing the Lurk position in lower tunnels in case there is a rotation here. Nobody in long just yet, and there are two Kingwin plays in the long area. So we'll see if they rotate one as this push comes in onto short. There is a play goose. That's Makaleli. Continuous flashes coming in. He has announced himself. Bit of fire from the Famas. The Molotovs will come in as uh, Na'Vi prepares to fight. See, so he's taking the frag. They've been playing so well for Na'Vi today. Many frags on the board continues to add. Kingwin, though, solidly in control of long. And again, we'll see how that Lurker now controls the mid-area. Yeah, Edward is there, and he'll get the frag onto Fox. So, lurking well and created a distraction, and there is the backstab from a teammate seized. He'll pick up the kill, and it looks all too easy for Na'Vi. You just with a simple delayed A execute, win another round. Yeah, very simple put stuff there from Na'Vi. Just using basic mechanics, pop flashing for each other, pushing towards that A split, and having four Famas is just making it impossible for Kingwin to do anything in that round. And now they have to eco. Yet again, which means we're going to look at 11 to 1 in favor of Navi. Well, I think you're about to see the uh, Kingwin side here. Indeed, you are. Pondering, thinking, what can they do to change things up here? Having a bit of a discussion amongst each other. And I, and I really believe, I wonder if eventually, at long term, they will uh, select AWPers for different scenarios, just as you saw from Flipside with Wilder and Simple. Yeah, that might actually be the case. And I just want to point out that we see a lot of teams make these mistakes where you it's good that they use the tactical timeout, but you shouldn't use it when you're down 11 to 1. You should try to re realize earlier, maybe at 5-1, 6-1, that they need to change something because this is way too late. Uh, uh, even if they win the rest of the rounds here on the CT half, I don't think they can make this comeback. Indeed, there are only, there are only three rounds left in the half at this point, so there's uh, only so much for them to turn around at this point. Yeah, it's a very, very poor situation. And uh, I mean, the way Na'Vi are playing is so explosive. It's, it can't have been something that they would have been able to predict either. So this is not, as as you mentioned, Bjorn, it's, it's not something we normally see out of Na'Vi. So. Oh, the double nades. We saw this in the previous round from uh, Na'Vi. They will do a little bit of damage there, but um, that could have been so much more because he saw the plan from Kingwin. They were just a second away from being annihilated by those nades. Yeah, and we see the stack coming in. I really like the stack, and they're going to move as an entire team through dark, and Flamey will find them. First man shows. There's the spray down on the second one. He sees everybody, and he's got help and sees. He was hanging about on catwalks as he has in the past, and only a single kill there. I mean, at this point, Economic damage does not really matter. There's so much money on RV. Posting rounds is what really matters. So King Moon just trying to get their economy in check. Anti-eco kills, fairly standard stuff. And will they go for the double op setup? Looks Ooh. like they're going to go for the single op setup. But if we've got triple ops and an auto sniper, Na'Vi giving absolutely no dams or whatsoever. But they won't get a single attack. They should have just left Guardian to it. We have a quick short push here, Dennis and Rain. Will they see a boost player onto player? Dennis is looking away in case a pot flash comes in from the opposing side. And uh, there's no engagement to be found just yet. Na'Vi starting to play a bit more Na'Vi style. Reutering outside the long doors with only one person towards mid. And the Guardian will spot that nade. And uh, you can see he's checking that. That is a blind spot in that corner. If you're a CT, you can stand there. And it's uh, if you're on short, it's actually impossible to see a player if he's facing the wall. We talked about this position before. It's hard to trade well as the CTs. Can Kingwin do it? Dennis there by the first crate. He's got some support. And there it is. Rain will pick up a kill, but he needs to make more happen. He's not got the bullets to do it. Just a single kill. One for two is not what you want. They need a massive save here from Michael Ele. He's going to work onto one. There's the double kill. But that's going to leave Guardian alone. So actually, Kingwin managing to do a huge amount of damage. All thanks to Michael Ele with that double kill there. And uh, here it is, still holding down the Goose position as Guardian goes in, looking for the highlight reel. And can he get a peek? He's looking for one, but he's going to get nailed in the side of the head. And that's going to be a round for Kingwin. Yeah, very impressive stuff there from Kingwin. They went for the aggressive short play. I think they wanted to punish the A split from Navi, trying to kill the guys on short first. However, they just got badly traded there on short, but Michael Ellie just winning the round here with his up. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a tough situation. They can't uh, always rely on that. 
necessarily, and it's 11 to 2 now. Can Kingwin make the four? Makalele is one of the few Orpers who actually uses. Uh, I've completely forgotten the name of it now. <laughs> acceleration, mouth acceleration. There we go. Back in the room. Back in the room. All right, so you can see a distinct lack of nades on the Kingwin side. Money still tight at the moment. There's only two rounds left for them to get in what has so far been a landslide here for Na'Vi. Na'Vi now heading over towards the uh, B-Tunnel area where there are two people holding it down for the uh, CT side. Fox going for those cheeky peeks. Got a, a bit of a trade coming in, and Na'Vi will continue the pressure now that they've seen exactly where Fox is. He won't be able to get another frag, and that's the B-Bomb site in control of the T's with Zeus holding down the tunnels. The King will need to make a pretty heroic retake now as the smokes go down. This is going to be a tough one, and there's already players pushed all over the place for Na'Vi. They've got control of Dark. They've got the uh, knees down on the door. Fire burning away at the window. And King will need a fast opener. There's still going to be so many players left. They've got four left in the bomb site. Rain's going to go straight on through. They get splashed in. Nice opening kills. Might just get a third one. And these Kingwin players are swarming this defense. There was no chance it would seem as Kingwin takes solid, convincing control once again of the bomb site for the defuse. The round. That'll be 11 3. Still one more to go, but that was impressive. Yeah, very impressive stuff. Going for a 3v4 retake on the B site versus Navi on Dust 2 is. Uh, would, I would say most team would actually save in that position. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, they really can't afford to drop any more rounds as we are into the last here. So, see what the buy is for both teams. We have the double lock once again onto King Gwyn, And this time, Guardian won't find a frag. That nade bringing up enough dirt to allow King Gwyn a safe passage towards the B bomb site. King Gwyn have a lot of nades now. They've won another round. And uh, of course, Navi still bringing the guns, bringing the pain, or at least trying to. Kingwin with two players in long at the moment. We have a lurker just standing outside the doors here for Navi. We'll see if the uh, Kingwin side choose to make peak the angle a bit later on. This time, McLeary doesn't get a, a shot onto short in time. Zeus coming in before McLeary can get into a better position. Here we go. I mean, we have a push on up a dart from Kingwin, but the players might not necessarily be in the right place because now Navi are all over this A bomb site. Edward with a nice defensive smoke to block off the choke point on the rotation from those B players up by Catwalk. And Kingwin looking at hard times here. However, they do have long control, so this could be the area which they can engineer a comeback of, into this bomb site onto. We get trades. Three versus four now for Kingwin as they make their way in, but this is looking strong right now. Flamey holding down the long side. We've got Edward on the other. Fox looking for a massive result. Gets two quick kills, and he cannot get any more. Zeus will shut him down 12 to 3. A very strong half in this opening. And if Kingwin were flying after that game against Virtus Pro, that 16-0, they are surely back on the ground right now. And now they're just completely outplaying Kingwin. I'm very surprised that they went for some of the fast short pushes, but they just managed to win all the aim du duels versus Kingwin. Yeah, yeah. Which means the only advantage that you would say Kingwin have versus a team like Navi is gone. Yes, I agree completely. Yeah, if they're flying now, it's because they're being launched from a Na'Vi cannon. Pistol round will be uh, most of what's left of their chance to get back into this game. Otherwise, they are going to be on death's door on the edge of the plank. So we'll see if they have what it takes. We know the plays are there, but Na'Vi are a formidable opponent. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's exactly as Rhett said, really. And I knew that it, I, I never had questioned that Navi would win, but I didn't think they would try this approach. Because usually against a team like Kingdom, where you're like, okay, they're a little bit unpredictable. It's hard to. You can't really counter strat them. You can't really read too far into the meta necessarily. So what you do is you, you do what Cloud9 did, which is like, let's have some solid fundamentals, solid basics, play as a team, and use our team playing coordination advantage, our advantage of being a solidly well gelled team, and win with that. That's what Cloud9 did. This was Navi saying, we're going to play your game and beat you. Yeah, 12, and they, three. yeah, and they will won 12-3 S2, so... All right, all to play for here for King Gwyn. Early presence into B-Tunnel, but will it uh, go all the way into B? 
Still a bunch of names, but are they going to commit? No, it looks like actually it could be a bit of a pinch. Three players coming through CT spawn, but they're going to have CTs to contend with. Guardian fighting in the first frag, able to escape. Actually, no, he won't. Fox will find the frag through the smoke. So Edward coming in for support now. He will take down one player, and the entire Na'Vi team is here. The numbers running out for Kingwin. 3v3, though, as they get the bomb down. Two players left on the side to try and defend things. Makaleli goes down to seize, and it's just down to Scream versus three. Running in with a knife, maybe trying to get some bonus money. But it will not happen, and that is a fast pistol round and 13-3 for Na'Vi. Yeah, just solid stuff there for Na'Vi, just letting them come into the B side, just winning the trade, just going for the retake together. Very disciplined play there from Na'Vi, and I think we're going to see a force buy here from Kingwin. They have to go for the force buy. The question is, will they have a set play? They did get that plan, so they will be able to buy Tech 9 and Nades. They're actually going to uh, go for the Eco. Yeah, this is actually kind of strange, because the funny thing is that force play you're talking about, just getting dropping the Galil and maybe an AK in there, that's actually becoming more into the meta now. So it's becoming more common. It's super good if you have the round, but maybe they're just like, guys, we, we don't have the execute to go with. We don't have the, the drill. And look at Na'Vi. They've gone straight for the big guns. No messing around. Maybe expecting such a play. They've gone for the uh, four M4s. They've just the one Famas, which I'm sure was a financial choice. Kingwin creeping up short, but they've got no nades. It's just going to be them running with Glocks and a few P250s over to the site. Can they make it over there? Guardian getting the first frag onto the short position. Loads of people around Gandalf, and they will make it there, and Guardian will consider his position and move into one more passive. Finding the angle, has got some teammates for support as well. The bomb plant does come in from Kingwin. That's going to be really important going forwards, and Na'Vi will lose no players in the retake. And this is the biggest problem with going for this eco. Not only are you giving <laughs> Na'Vi 14 rounds, but you're giving them a chance to win a round flawlessly, which means they can build a bank. So not only is Navi leading with, with 14 to 3, they have the economic advantage as well. So this is going to be, I think this is just going to be way too hard for Kingwin. Yeah, I mean, they have to win more than one buy round in a row, basically. And that, they, you need to get that eco coming in straight away, get the resets in. Okay, so this means Mark Lele, he's got a he's got a, a lot to live up to. Guardian was getting the tag almost, I think, like a hundred, almost a hundred percent of the time. It was up there. Yeah, but Navi are not giving him any options. Smoke coming in straight away. And it's worth mentioning that Makaleli is running around in his boxer shorts at the moment. No Kevlar, and he's already down to six HP. I see that scream. Excuse me. So not going well for for Kingwin so far. And again, even if they win this round, Navi are going to be straight back on the buy thanks to that previous round where nobody was lost. But, I mean, we're, we're at a four versus four here, so Kingwin can make something happen. What would you think that, that, would, that would be really good for them to do in this position, uh, Threat? They just have to play solid default T-2 and just win our, a lot of rounds. They just have to string the rounds together, force Navi to a bunch of Ecos. But here specifically in this round. Oh, yeah, I actually like this play, just going for a push here together. Uh, it's too bad for them, there's two players here, but I think a Navi players are going to push, push through this mode. Wow. There he goes, Youth making an effort there, but Fox will find the frag. You've got C's just looking down. I'm going to try and suggest that nobody's in B. You'll only find one frag, though. Rain coming in really fast there, giving Kingwin a man advantage as well as the site. So you're going to go for some free aim fire, get a little bit of a tag onto Fox, but nothing else doing. He's going to push through the site, and he hasn't been detected just yet. The frag's coming in. Makalele, though, is going to take down Flamey, leaving only Guardian versus two. And Scream, oh, uh, sorry, Fox will come in and find the frag with Makaleli in for support. So there is um, there's a bubble of air in these deep waters for Kingwin to hold on to. It's pretty interesting. They actually got kind of lucky that Na'Vi went for an information play as they were going in for the B push. Because maybe if, if that timing was a bit faster, they, they would have lost too many players on the entry. Yeah, it was a nice try from Na'Vi. If you were in a 4v4 as CT on Dust2, you have to go for either a stack or the information play. Just unlucky with the timing. All right, so again, Na'Vi back on the buy. Although it is a relatively cheap one, lacking nades. Guardian on the scout, wow. and he's going to make it work. Penetration kill, no less, straight into the face of Makalele. He has left the oh building well God. and truly. That sucks. That is that is an incredible shot there, and that's going to take out the orchestra straight away. Of course, Fox can AWP, but losing a player like that early into the round, really, it's hard to deal with. But it's back to a 4-4. Four four. Kingwin played this position previously. They went for that B push they did, as threats suggested, just go together. Looks like they're doing the same here, James. We've got the bomb moving up short with the rest of the lineup. Zeus so could be in a very, very tricky situation very soon. Indeed, and again, in terms of counter nades from the Na'Vi side, there is one flash onto Edward and one onto Thieves. And that's your lot. Zeus going down to Scream now, and uh, the Kingwin man advantage continues to rise. 
Scream coming in and just uh, carving everybody up. That's his third, third frag of the round so far. Sees and Edward in a position where they can only go for the save now. And yeah. I think Caesar looking for the AWP, but it's on Fox. Yeah, Navi really need to eco now. It would actually be a good idea for Navi to go for the double eco in this position because it's very unlikely they're gonna force King Win to any more ecos this half, considering they have 14 rounds. And look at their money. Four peop four players with almost no money at all. So I would like to see Navi actually go for the double eco here. They have so many rounds to play with. We'll see if they choose the conservative play once we see the conclusion of this round. Seized and Edward will indeed survive. So we can see the money is uh, not great here for the Navi side. Guardian with 4,400 in the bank will pick up a scout. We saw the damage he did last time. Boom. Look at that. He was all the way past the door. He's like, now you see me. Now you get wrecked. Oh my god, that was awesome. That is Guardian Rear just, just making a statement. He's going to get tagged down this time around by Fox. He's going to toss the orb straight back to Mike Lele. So, ooh, seized him with a quick push up. Catwalk's not really been spotted this kind of triple man aggression from Navi so far. And that's going to actually catch King Gun off guard a little bit. So, Lorraine is down. And this time it's Navi with an early man advantage. But two players incredibly weak and not really a buy to shout about. I like that little detail from King Gwyn, where it's like, all right, let's let Fox take the jewels in mid, because he's more of a specialist on that. And then let's throw the yelp back to the primary upper, Makalele. So nice little thing there. And you see the results. So uh, Navi had committed their remaining four plays over towards the A site, but he put one back into B. Just have a look. But he's moving closer to his teammates as uh, King Gwyn started to push down long with the entire team. Navi still in control of short, maybe see, hearing and seeing these nades, trying to close the distance. Flash is coming in, but they've got an opportunity to get over, to get closer to the site here. Flamey holding down the uh, Gandalf area, but not finding a frag through the smoke onto screen. Yeah, this is looking pretty strong here for Kinguin. So they're, they're actually generating momentum. They're forcing out in a hard economic times. They may even get a reset. Well, actually, <laughs> to get a reset on Navi, to get even more rounds, Navi go to match point. So that's kind of the rough situation. I think why you're talking about, you know, wanting to, them to, to force it up much sooner, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why they really need to force it up earlier. That you can't let the opponents get to 14 rounds because, as Dan said, it's almost impossible to reset their economy now because you're going to get them to 15 rounds. And now they will go for the second eco here. They actually managed, managed to save three guns. I really, I really like this. However, I don't. I think they should go for the force by even though they saved three weapons. Even got an upgrade, one M4 to an AK instead. You can see not much buying. You just bought a flashbang and some armor, so uh, just keeping their. Uh... Oh, indeed, they are going to go for the force. Full nades coming in, all the guns as well. It looks like they had a, quite a conversation about that one, actually. I, I, I agree with you. I think just seeing an AWP onto Guardian again would be quite encouraging, but maybe he's liking his luck with the scouts. He's having I'm quite a good time with it. I'm getting cold shivers watching these two duel oh through mid. God. He just wants to keep refacing. Oh, Rain with a nice frag onto Edward. Insta traded by Seize, however. And Dennis is going to try and force the issue again. Ruthless aggression from him, but he's not going to find the frag. Seize getting tagged, but he will be the one to find the frag. So now it's a three versus four. This is going to be very hard for Kingwin indeed. Navi with the bodies to put behind both bomb sites. Despite Guardian and Seize being quite low, Guardian has now tossed away the scouts in favor of an M4A1S. And it looks like King are falling back to that play we saw earlier when they got an, an early pick into the round. They're going for that B play. They surely must know that Seize is weak. They want to play against that. And Molotov in to try to eliminate some of the dangerous positions. Very smart by King Gwyn, But uh, they should be telegraphing what they're doing at the moment. And with 45 seconds left, Navi can start to begin to think about a rotation. Here they go. Into Seize crosshair. We get an epic spray down there. Three in a row. Great timing on the flash. Absolutely spot on from Navi. Zip them up. Somebody send body bags towards the B-bomb site, please. And that was an extremely weird round from King when they actually did a three-man push, tried to force themselves through that smoke on towards the B site with only three people. And that kind of can make sense if you have two people going for the B split in mid or you have two people faking short. But I think the other two players were actually in T-spawn rotating back towards the B site. Guardian missing a rare shot. I say missing, but yeah, he did he, tag Makarele. Yeah. So I, I sincerely apologize, Guardian. <laughs> he made the, the tag at the very least. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Bruce Gunn got shot away. That's actually hilarious. Gift, please. Thank you very much. So yeah. an early advantage for Kinguin, although they are they are facing nine match points here. So pressure will be high. 
to say the least. Sees making it back over towards the CT spawn side. So they're committing to A, it seems. Maybe playing for the save. This is so Should good. Should the uh, T's take B? The threat talks about this all the time. I think it's the first time we see a team actually do it, so... Yeah. Threat, would you like to explain? Yeah, they're just going for the A stack, because if Kingwin pushes B, they can just save the rifle and go for the buy the next drop. This is very smart from Navi. Well, Deuce with a good position is take down Makalele. And again, that, that smoke, that flash he did from short, you can actually do from long. Uh, where he doesn't have to risk himself like that, but never mind. It's four versus three. They still have the man advantage here as they push the site, and they've still got Makalele now lurking uh, for the rotation for the CTs, but the CTs have the angles. Flamey me finding a frag, and he's jockeying for position. He will not find a jewel, but he's got a teammate to try and help. Deuce won't get a frag either, so King Gwyn survived for now with two players. Too bad there for now that they actually started to rotate towards B, it looks like, because just as they pushed out long, they just wrote it back towards the beast. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, production. Look at that. Spinning in the air. Oh, yeah. Lost into space. Love the physics. Love the ragdoll. All right. So once again, we're going to see Michael Elliott taking his chances on mid. But finally, you know, Navi don't really have any weapons to work with. And they do have two players in lower dark, though, so they might be able to make something happen. I'm wondering why they, for that one round, they let Fox take the duel into mid, and then now Makaleli's back to doing it. Maybe they didn't realize that he made the shot, or I don't know, but uh, doing it for only one round, I'm just kind of curious. I think he just had a better spawn. Maybe Makaleli had a worse spawn, which means he cannot go for the mid peak. Ah, that would explain a lot. Otherwise, it's like people taking free kicks. Well, I think I'll try it this time, you know. Maybe you can give it to me afterwards. Okay, so. Interesting positioning from Na'Vi here, and this could absolutely crush King Gwyn. That's going to be the first duel, and it will be a trade. Scream taking down Zeus, but will he expect Edward? Edward with the uh, P250 can't get the job done there, and that will ring alarm bells for King Gwyn, re realizing that Na'Vi are up to some shenanigans, and that may slow down the approach here from the T's. We have another push coming in from the B-bomb site this time. It sees, and he's going to get shot in the face, Dan. Yeah, just killing Edward there is, was everything for King Gwyn. Otherwise, they get locked out of dark, but still Na'Vi putting in damage regardless. And Kingwin, they will get the bomb down and they, they should never lose this round from this position. Yeah, but they've sustained damage and two AKs picked up for Na'Vi, that's pretty solid. Na'Vi needs to save these weapons. The only thing Na'Vi needs to think about now is we need to get as many full weapon rounds as we can before they will get to 15 rounds. So this is smart play from them. There's no reason to go for this retake. Indeed, and uh, Kingwin will be paranoid for a little while as only three players left and two rifles in the hands of the CTs. They'll have to uh, make sure their exit is clean as they cannot afford significant economical damage. So, King Gwyn get one more round in the bag, but how long can they last? Every round that goes by, you have to wonder if their confidence builds, but again, they are walking a tightrope. And they're not walking it with ballet shoes, more like Timberland boots. One yeah. wrong step and they're going to go flying. It's like Na'Vi had trapped them in a box and they're like pouring water into the box slowly. The air is running out, James. That sounds horrible, Dad. I don't know where you come up with these things. So, McAnally going to miss the shot through mid. Na'Vi uh, blocking the vision there with the HE. <laughs> and we have a fast push from Guardian. Down short, and there's a player hiding near a box, but it's Guardian. Oh, I feel sorry, someone's about to get wrecked. Ooh. Nice flash coming in, and that's going to leave Guardian just about with enough health to get the hell out of there. Avoiding the nade from Rain as well. And he will run away with his tail between his legs. Nobody down for either side yet, and Navi will go to a more traditional format following that short push. I like, sorry, as I was gonna say, I like the poor man's helmet, which is like the, the, uh, the stone there, just up short, so... Very nice. Guardian actually survived for Na'Vi's sake. Going for that aggressive pick. I liked how Kingwin were able to predict that, but they are moving up Catwalk now. They're looking for that engagement. However, Guardian's on 17 HP. How are they going to use nades? Are they going to go for the open aim jewels here? What are they going to do? Will they jump a player down into CT? That can be very effective as well. There's nobody towards the long push here, so it's all in on the damage that Guardian does or does not do. And the drop into CT will happen here. Fox will pick up. No, he won't get the kills. Two somehow makes it happen. However, we've got Flamey here by long. He's able to cover for Guardian as the bomb can soon perhaps go down, but these Na'Vi players are surrounding them. However, they are falling slowly but surely. Kingwin doing an excellent job now, picking up these frags, as we'll see sees the last hope here for Na'Vi. Still a very winnable situation, but he has to be very smart. He's got to be convicted in his decision-making here. Which way does he look? 
Now we've got screen behind the smoke, and that's going to be a shot straight to the dome. And that'll be another round for Kingwin. They are clawing their way back here. But eventually, I mean, well, eventually it feels like Na'Vi are going to pull through. But will they? It comes down to winning the rounds at the end of the day. And I don't like that you're buying Seasedge Deagles and stuff on these eco rounds because it's very, very unlikely that they're going to win this round. And they're not going to force Kingwin to an eco. So it really doesn't make any sense to buy in these situations. So let's see if Kingwin can avoid more shenanigans from Na'Vi. Na'Vi pushing short once again. Green holding a passive angle. He's somewhat expect expectant of this, and that's going to be a great Molotov to push the CTs back. That could be followed up with a nade from lower tunnel. Flamey may be expecting such. will have a nade of his own. And that will uh, confirm Na'Vi's suspicions that... Sorry, Kingwin's, Kingwin's suspicions that Na'Vi were pushing short. So they'll be, again, very careful in their approach. Sticking together in the mid area with Fox holding an angle on long. We'll spot a player there, but uh, will barely connect as Kingwin continue their march up short. The march of the machines. Zeus is looking to uh, throw some, something into the works, but it's not going to happen. Kingwin make their way up slowly but surely, and not really any damage to be done by Na'Vi. Again, this is around more about their economy, but we've seen Flamey do more from this position with Adik before. He's picked up one kill. And there's someone lurking in Goose. This could actually happen. He's providing a good distraction here. And there it is. Edward will take down Fox. Four versus three. Na'Vi with a player advantage. Oh, my God. Guardian gets a headshot onto Scream. What is happening right now for Kingwin? Everything's going wrong. Weapons. Three weapons picked up by Na'Vi. And Kingwin on the desperation push back to B. There is an AWP in play as well, and that has just been perfectly executed by Na'Vi. They're going to get an angle before, they, before the teeth can get out of the tunnel. They're going to get tagged, but Kingwin is still alive. There's a player on the site now. The bomb's gone down, and it's just Makalele versus two more. Guardian and Edward, but there's five seconds left, which means that Flamey and Co. are going to run away. Well, they could have run away, but they're going to just get a frag anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finally, take it over the line here to get the first game in this best of three. Yeah, I've never seen the three players be so afraid of one deagle in a slope. I think they stood around the Gandalf box for 20 seconds. Never dared to make that push on towards the side. Yeah, I think there must have been some uncertainty as to what to do there within two minds. Do we go forward or do we push back? The bait was excellent there. Got an important frag as well. And after that, uh, Kingwin seems to be lost. Absolutely. And I mean, after that performance, Na'Vi, I mean, they never looked like they were afraid. So I'm scared for Kingwin of what's going to happen on Inferno. It should be the harder map. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a really hard time seeing King Win get more than three or four rounds on the T side. Maybe if they get the pistol, force Navi to a lot of ecos, but I highly doubt that their T side is going to be as strong as Navi's. Well, we're going to have to uh, find out what's going to happen a bit later on as we're going to head to a break and then be back with the other guys to uh, look at the end of that map and the beginning of the next. See you in a few minutes.